Curtis Alexander, is coffee good for weight loss? People get concerned. They hear they shouldn't drink coffee. If you like drinking coffee, this video will probably put your mind at ease. I'm just going to go over kind of five main points that, that kind of back up. Yes, it does help you lose weight. And I'll talk a little bit about how you want to drink your coffee to help in that regard. So what we want to think about your goal with weight loss, I've talked about this before, it's much easier to improve your metabolism than it is to try to restrict everything. So our goal, if we want to lose weight, should be to improve our oxidative metabolism. This is the most efficient way for your body to produce energy. Okay. Now, the problem is most, pe most people are in a low metabolic state. What you're going to see as we go through these five points is if you do coffee right, it's going to help get you out of that low metabolic state. Now, you need many other things outside of coffee. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying it can be helpful in that regard. And now it does it through a bunch of different mechanisms, and I'm going to talk about those. So first and foremost, caffeine can help your thyroid hormone secretion. And this is, I mean, your thyroid is your metabolism. It's what drives your metabolism. You want a healthy thyroid coffee helps you do that. And it does that by decreasing serotonin in the thyroid cells and increases cyclic AMP. Now, some people will go, I thought serotonin was a happy hormone. Serotonin is not the happy hormone. It's, it's been known, it's been proven, it will reduce metabolic rate. And, and that's kind of driven home. Like if you talk to people or if you've been on the medication class known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, Paxil, Zoloft, those sorts of things, and antidepressants, their whole goal is basically to increase serotonin in your system. Well, one of their biggest side effects is you see weight gain. It's because serotonin slows down metabolism. It's not what we want. Coffee can help in this regard. It increases the uptake of serotonin, gets it out of your bloodstream, helps deactivate it. Okay. So that's very important. Next one. Increases mitochondrial uncoupling. Okay. Mitochondrial uncoupling is important because it's been shown to treat obesity. It's been shown to treat fatty liver disease. And it's not the only thing that can do it. Aspirin can do it. Thyroid hormone does it. But we know if coffee is helping the thyroid and more thyroid hormone helps do this, that's kind of a double whammy. So what do mitochondrial uncouplers actually do in your body? It's going to help you convert sugar into carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide the more carbon dioxide you're producing, it's a sign of a better metabolism versus the other alternative, which is you're going to produce lactic acid. Okay. Lactic acid is going to slow down your metabolism. The other thing coffee does, it helps decrease fatty acid liberation. Now, anybody who's followed, you know, and they're hearing about how oh, the keto diet, we want to liberate fatty acids. It's not actually that great of a thing, particularly when you do it long term. When you liberate fatty acids, your body will use those as fuel, but it tends to convert it to lactic acid. We talked about that. It's going to slow metabolism. It's also going to produce inflammatory cytokines. Those are something we don't want as well. And the last thing I'd like to point out with coffee in this case is it has a pretty high amount of vitamin B1 that's called thiamine. Thiamine is critical for being able to convert carbohydrates into energy. We already talked about how important it is to be able to, to have that oxidative metabolism, this part of that, also critical for brain and nervous system function. That's part of why when people have coffee, they'd be a little more on point because it's, it's very high in thiamine. So now what you don't want to do, okay, we want to stay away from stress metabolism, drinking black coffee and, and you're fasting like I do too, like I used to. That's going to be counterproductive. You want to have coffee with a meal, help offset some of those blood sugar swings that people can see, or you can have it with milk and honey. I used to not enjoy it that way. That's the only way I'll drink coffee now. I love it. And, and that's a very safe way to have coffee to get the benefits without some of the downsides, the jitteriness, those sorts of things. So uh, let me know in the comments, guys, other video topics that would be helpful for me to cover. I'll do that and make sure. Go to my website, grab your free checklist, talk about a ton of other things on my email list that you can do outside of drugs and surgery to start looking better and feeling better at any age. Okay. I hope it was helpful, guys. I'll see you in the next one.